Sonita Kalra, and welcome to the second edition of the Vogue India and Natural Diamond Council's Diamond Festival. I'm going to be in conversation with the brilliant actor Aditi Rao Haidari. Known for her effortless style, what makes Aditi an icon is that she effortlessly bridges the old and the new. She embraces the interplay of tradition with the modern day and yet retains a strong sense of personal style. She's been a member of the Style Collective of the Natural Diamond Council in India since 2021. We worked together for a long time when we talked about trends and how the world is changing and how our relationship to natural diamonds is changing as well. Back in 2021, stuck in the middle of the pandemic, we looked at natural diamonds to gift us a renewed sense of gratitude. We learned to develop a new language when we told the story of our lives through this stone and perhaps in a strange way came across and developed a term called the modern day heirloom. This year in 2021, when we've done the trend report, we've seen something much more fun. A longing for renewal has been replaced by a desire to find individuality and singularity. And we've been using the natural diamond with insouciance and irreverence. The stone is more powerful now because it's become sharply personal. Thank you for joining us this morning. And let's go straight to the conversation about the natural diamond and your special love for it and what drew you to diamonds. Thank you, Nonita. I'm always excited when I get to talk to you. So shall we straight away go into your first memory of diamonds and what you remember about it? I think my first memory is just that they sparkle and they're magical. Uh, and, um, you know, I i mean, apart from seeing a very beautiful necklace that my grandmother had, and the central piece of that necklace was, uh, is, uh, you know that um, seven stone setting or the nine stone setting that you have in typical South Indian jewelry? Uh, I think it's called Tode. And um, the it's, a, the, it's it's basra pearls and rubies on the on the choker part of it, and the center is like a thode. So actually, nothing goes with anything. Uh, but it it and I suspect that it was also put together like that. I, I suspect that that central piece was separate and it was added onto it. I'm not sure, but that is my first memory of being completely um, mesmerized by these sparkling stones. You are obsessed with Chand Bali's. Every time we've spoken to you, you've talked about Chand Bali's. Yeah. So tell us what drew you to them. Um, I like to think, by the way, that you're terribly on trend because it's the new version of a kind of hoop. And that is what we're seeing in 2022 as well. That's true. It is. It is a hoop. It's an OG hoop. Um, and it's a very beautifully balanced and placed hoop, you know, like it's really complementary to uh, your face. And it's somehow um, because of the shape of it, it somehow gives a kind of I don't know, it, it, it's very it sits very perfectly on one's face. And I also feel like when natural diamonds are set in Chanbalis, uh, they almost look like the moon and the stars and the name itself suggests that, you know, it is a Chanbali. So it's like you know, wearing, a, wearing the moon uh, on your face. Uh, I, I mean, uh, it's like it's like holding the moon and wearing the moon. So I find that very sort of, um, uh, what is the word for it, romantic or dreamy? Uh, almost well, like it has this ephemeral quality and I think that's what makes it really special. So I love the Chanwali for this reason. And yeah. Well, you're in good company, you know, uh, icons like Josephine Baker and Diana Russell won them. Of course, Beyonce's hoops uh, at the Grammys after party were also sort of much admired and they were all individual. But I hear that more than just loving Chand Bali's, you're also personalizing a pair for yourself. You know that we've talked so much about jewelry, Aditi, but what has happened is from what we did last year, which is buy our own jewelry and tell the story of the new heirloom. And I think it's this modern day heirloom was us rewriting maybe some of the grief, but a lot of the gratitude. This year feels to me much more about a forward story, about rewriting the future. So the modern heirloom becomes almost future forward. Tell me a little about what made you decide to get your own Chanwalis and what did you think when you were commissioning it? 
um i think i think you're right you know anita and uh, i feel like it's more about owning who you are what you want to do where you want to go and i think a lot of that also has to do with the pandemic and how it's affected a lot of us um because suddenly priorities uh, and uh, you know what it is how important every moment is to you uh, i think that's what has struck us very very strongly and i think so too with our choices whether it's life choices whether it's career choices whether it's jewelry choices i think it's all about you know um, telling yourself that you're important your choices are important what you uh, what you want is important what things and people and moments make you feel those are important and i always say this and i think you you were telling me this uh, before we started this interview it's so important uh, you know to hold uh, the objects that you are going to wear or that you're going to own to feel them to let them make you feel something and i think that is why um, personalizing things or going out there creating your own uh, memories your own uh, stories is very important and whether you do that through jewelry or any any other creative pursuit i think it's it's really important for ourselves to do that uh, and this is a time when i think it's so important for us to realize that every one of these experiences um of choice of knowing your choice of uh, actually standing there and making your choice Uh, however simple it may sound uh, is so important for us to feel whole and to feel complete and to feel like we matter so uh, yeah you i like i loved what you said about you know in the morning before starting this interview you said that you wore these earrings and you let them like just be on you yeah and i think that that was so lovely and so sweet and you always say like i i feel like i think many things <laughs> and you always say them so beautifully that it it's like yeah that's what it is because i did the same with this i got this really sweet delicate little necklace and the moment i got it i just put it on i was in my pjs but i put it on <laughs> you know i love that you talk about the fact that we both got this jewelry and we wore it immediately yeah um and the fact that you wanted to stack your necklace you know what i've been noticing aditi the way people are wearing jewelry and especially young women and i love seeing this on young women they are taking demi fine jewelry precious jewelry they're taking natural diamonds and wearing them in a rare and unique way they're stacking them they're treating yeah. them irreverently they're wearing it with white t-shirts most of all what i'm noticing is that when people are buying jewelry young women older women any men they're wearing it all the time i yeah. notice now that when i go for a workout everyone is wearing all their stacks and i asked somebody i said are these diamonds coming in the way of your workout when you say do a headstand in yoga and they're like no because they adjust it they tuck it but i think the way you wear your natural diamonds while the stone is rare and unique you're wearing it in a very personalized way and you know you love your your diamonds yeah. i want to see how you would stack your jewelry it would be really interesting if you walked us through maybe a little personal Your, your, through your personal style, and also give us a little style tip of how you would stack a lot of necklaces, for example. So, will you talk us through how you're going to style some of the layers that you've been wanting to wear? It's my favorite thing to do. I love stacking not just neck pieces, but I want to stack things on my wrist. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to call it a wrist party because that's the headline we all use in the business. Um, one of my favorite things is to wear like statement rings. You yeah, know, I, like finger, I mean, yeah. I love wearing statement rings. I don't know why. I think I use my hands so much. This yes. is my actual. This this is my personal punctuation. <laughs> it does look really nice. But even I love stacking, and I feel like it. It it's it's a, it's a little bit of you. You know how you stack it, so it makes it very personal, and you can just do it in so many ways, and nothing ever looks the same. so with the same lot of jewelry you can do so many things so i have uh, two stacks today uh, one is I, i'm one i'm already wearing and then i was sent another one so i'm going to put that on but i would like it shorter so i'm just going to try and hook it in shorter and hope that it works i don't know yes yeah 
So I don't know if you can see that. It's so simple, but it's so sweet. And I, also, I love that you're wearing it in an informal way with sort of, you know, you're wearing it casually. And I assume that if you were to go out in the evening, you would just change your top and go out wearing the same jewelry. Maybe add another stack. You can't, you can never have too many diamonds. You know, uh, given uh, my, uh, this thing for dressing up, I would possibly wear exactly the same thing, which is basically slightly nicer looking PJs and wear these diamonds, possibly have uh, slightly more done hair and makeup, but even that I doubt. But yes, I would, I would possibly stack some more rings or something. So it looks cool and chill. I, li I like it when things are effortless, even when you're wearing diamonds, um I, precious but still effortless and i think that's what makes it precious is the fact that you know what you were saying about going to a yoga class with your diamonds on like i actually feel that if i was wearing um a jewelry that was not precious which were possibly not natural diamonds or natural stones i would possibly take those off because i know that those are going to hurt me but with precious jewelry natural diamonds they uh, they, they belong to you and they belong on you so you don't never think of removing them. I, I mean, this is how I look at her. I've seen my grandmother not sleep with their, you know, natural diamond earrings for years. And nobody thinks of removing them. So tell me, Aditi, you've been part of the Style Collective for two years. And, you know, we've had some really beautiful trends this year, from the hoop to vintage cuts to mismatched diamonds. Huh. Which trend is your favorite? I think um, mismatched diamonds, jewelry, that I love. I like anything that's uh, vintage. And I, and I strangely feel vintage has relevance. And there's a reason why it's vintage. There's a reason why it's called timeless. Um, is because it's always relevant at every point in time. And then you can, you can redo it. You can revamp it. You can rewear it. You can, you can do so much with it. it and it, it, it changes itself according to the wearer or the user or uh, that time in history and I think that's what's so beautiful about something that's classic and something that's precious and something um, you know that holds value and I, I guess that is what is luxury what it makes you feel uh, when it is either passed down to you or you buy it or it's about how special it makes you feel you know what, what I, I want to know what yours your favorite is it's so weird. I happened to be at the v &A two days ago and I went to the jewelry section because I wanted to look at all the vintage jewelry and the vintage cuts and how they present diamonds. And you're so right. When they put it in the context of history and who wore it and when, it becomes very individual. And I think that's the beauty of vintage cuts, right? The wearer changes how it's presented. But I also think that we're at a moment where, you know, that's, this trend of future nostalgia is really important to us. It's it's a longing for the good old times, but not with the bad, but with the memories of this of the people that you loved. Yes. And I think diamonds fit in that really beautifully because Aditi, when you talk about your grandmother and you've talked about her often, she comes alive for me. I feel like I know her and you, you and I were chatting yesterday and I was telling you she feels really wise. You said she was innocent and wise. And so vintage cuts are always very special to me because they, they evoke an emotion that nothing else can. Yes. And of course, we were looking at the settings of the VNA and we realized, my God, you see them over and over again in jewelry right now. But to be perfectly honest with you, you asked me my favorite. I love mismatched diamonds. Uh, you know, whether it's a, it's a rose cut diamond, a briolette, a, whatever the shape is. And I'll tell you why I like it. I think it allows you to play, allows you to be serious and playful at the same time. And I yeah. think all of us ha have two sides to us. All women have two sides. And I think that, you know, a, a beautiful, brilliantly cut diamond, which playfully winks at you with the shine and its brilliance, allows you to explore the rare and unique in you. Yes, that's so true. And feel rare and unique. That's so true. And, and it almost like it calls out to you because it's sparkling and like you said, winking at you. Tell me about one of your favorite looks wearing natural diamonds, whether it was in a film or in real life. 
And actually, because I'm greedy, I want you to do both. Tell me about your favorite look wearing natural diamonds and what did it make you feel then? <laughs> I think wearing natural diamonds always makes you feel magical. Like, you know, it's like, I always, I, I always sort of think of nature when I think of, uh, uh, when I think of something that's very special and nature and something magical. So whether it's fireflies or stars, or it's like being covered in stars. Um, you know, or having like little fireflies all around you. And I think that that's just so mesmerizing. Um, so my favorite uh, diamond moment would be, I think it's, it's, it's very small actually, but it's very special to me. So, you know, uh, sometimes in, in films, they want you to wear a nose pin. And there's always a little box with a nose pin that the, the stylist gives you. But I always carry my natural diamond nose ring, uh, which I have always gotten made myself. I know it's not a very big deal, but I'm very like, even, even if it's a small little diamond, I'm so particular that it should shine and it should be clean and it should, you know, be good quality, like a good South Indian. I always look. Um, so I always carry my nose pin. And the moment I put on my nose pin, I feel I always do this because this, <laughs> I can't describe what that feels like. It just feels really, I feel like a little kid basically who got a shiny toy. <laughs> so um, I, I love that. So my nose pin, I think is one of my onset experiences of natural diamonds. I would say that's the most special because it's my own. It means a lot to me. I got it made myself and I think it really makes the face glow like nothing else can. Um, and as an actor, you probably know which side of your face to wear the nose pin so that the natural diamond catches the light and your face is lit radiantly and naturally. That I leave to DOPs and directors who are very good. And I always work with some incredible people. So I leave that to them. I'm telling you with me, it's, sometimes it's this side, sometimes it's this side. Who knows? It depends on the day. <laughs> but tell me, recently you commissioned a piece for yourself an emerald surrounded with beautiful natural diamonds. What made you decide to do this? What made you decide that you needed to gift yourself something? And you tell me about this piece. You, uh, Nanita, I remember we were doing a shoot together and it was in the lockdown and I only had ganges and chuck pants available because I had come from shoot and I had to put a gun to my brother's head and ask him to shoot this photograph that we needed and I remember for that uh, uh, you had sent across some jewelry and there were these I saw these lovely rings and I just instinctively just stacked them and out of these rings was an emerald ring with natural diamonds around it and I put that on and we did that shoot and I remember because there was no makeup it was just a ganji and there was this fine precious jewelry and a clean face, no hair, makeup. Like it was really, really simple. And everybody really liked it, including photographers who texted me and asked me who's taken this photograph. And I said, it's my brother. <laughs> and um, a lot of people also commented on the ring. And I just decided because I had a complicated lockdown and more than complicated and traumatic, I had also worked very hard through it to get various films out, you know, make sure that, you know, I was doing all my interviews, but I had worked very hard. So it was almost like I decided to gift myself this emerald ring. And strangely, much later, after I designed it, drove everybody crazy trying to look for that particular square emerald Colombian with the natural baguettes around it, which I didn't get, but I got other natural diamonds. I realized much later after I wore it that it was exactly like my grandmother's earrings and necklace that she had. So I was like, this is my grandmother with me and she'll always be with me, protecting me. So, you know, it's, it's really funny, but this concept of self-gifting for me sort of also grew up during the pandemic. And apart from the fact that, you know, I was really thinking about slow fashion and um, sort of conscious luxury I actually bought myself most recently rose cut diamonds with mismatched pearls at the bottom because they reminded me of what my grandmother used to have, but it was an updated version of her piece. 
And I wear them all the time because for me, diamonds and wearing my memories or wearing and you know a modern day heirloom has become part of my everyday. Yeah. So it's been, I, I think, Aditi, what we should talk about is how our relationship with diamonds has really changed. The natural diamond, of course, you know, when we, all, all of us believe in ethical fashion, we believe in sustainable living, it takes all those boxes. But this particular, you know, shiny, sparkly, rare and unique stone, what, why has our relationship changed so much with it? Uh, I think because we've realized... I, I actually, I, I mean, I don't know when it happened for anybody else, but for me, I think the pandemic and the two and a half years that the world went through so much uh, strife and like trauma, I think that really changed a lot of how I look at time, how I look at, you know, family, how I look at relationships, memories, what is important to me, basically priorities, uh, all of that changed. And uh, and I will say it changed even in, in, in every little, little uh, way it changed. Every choice, every, um, you know, and it, it, it became more about understanding that uh, I can't always keep running like a hamster on a wheel, doing things for people without uh, also understanding that the individual uh, that I am important and I'm one of those people who forgets that you know because I'm, I love doing things for people but I'm also important and if I don't replenish myself how will I do anything for anybody else so if if it's by just buying yourself that beautiful natural diamond or you know or a piece of jewelry that you really love and that makes you feel special and that that that's a, that's one way of doing it there are so many ways of doing it but I think that these little uh, childlike ways are very important too like my ring came out of that literally I was just like I had worked so hard um, even during the pandemic I had so many releases I had I was constantly like where everybody was chilling I was on zoom calls releasing this film that film doing all of that and I was very grateful for it but as a part of all of that I literally gifted myself this ring I was like you know you deserve it and you know, you it's a, a part of your grandmother's memory. I may not have done it very consciously, but to me, like my grandmother's so important to me and who I am and my upbringing and everything that I guess like when I wear that ring, I, you know, I keep her with me all the time. So, which is why I even have her earrings here with me. You know, I was telling you about the South Indian earrings that I have of my grandmother's, um, which I'm not going to pull out because I can't find the key. <laughs> I tried in the morning. But, no, but you know, what I've been noticing is that while we hold on to our grandmother's pieces and our mother's pieces, and I had a particular pair of star earrings that I call my invincible earrings because they were my mother's and I reset them. Well, I changed just how they sat on my ears. Um, I have been wanting to gift myself more diamonds, more natural diamonds. And the funny thing is, of course, I, I have a wish list for my a husband of what he should give me because I see diamonds as a relationship of it's a relationship of love he's made me you know an eternity man I want him to give give me some things that in my head speak of our relationship but increasingly I spend all my time looking at natural diamonds and thinking this is what I want to buy for myself because this feels like a love letter to me yeah and there's something about natural diamonds and the stories they carry. And I, I don't think I've seen any other stones that carry this kind of, I don't know, whether it whether I feel that they reflect my sparkle or it's their brilliance that's so warm, you know, you shine in its light. I keep using diamonds to write a love letter to myself. Do you find yourself doing this? Um, yeah, uh, for me, the... Uh... The, the beauty of a diamond lies in the fact that, you know, like as, as a child, the most, um, the most spectacular thing that you see, uh, according to me, and the most wondrous, you know, thing that you see uh, are stars in the sky. I think there's nothing more magical than stars in the sky. And, and they twinkle and they're just so beautiful. And as a, as a child, you know, you want to reach out and you want to hold a star. And you want it to be in your hand, in the palm of your hand. And it it makes your eyes sparkle, you know. 
uh, like you always say, there's a twinkle in 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 her eye, and um, so I think that's that that kind of wondrous sort of um, uh, magical quality uh, that stars have, um, diamonds have that, and I think for me that's what makes diamonds so special, and that's why um, I find that gifting myself a diamond or uh, you know and and especially natural I mean we're uh, when, when natural diamonds are their flaw like stars also have stars are not perfect they have flaws and anything in nature has flaws and i think every imperfection of a natural diamond is what adds to its value because nothing is the same as anything else and i think that's what makes gifting yourself a diamond so special because then you you believe that you are worth it and that you deserve that, and that you um, you add value to this this diamond, and the diamond adds value to you. And I think it's it's a relationship between the individual and a natural diamond that makes it all the more special and unique. I love that. I love that the poet in you comes out when you talk about diamonds. I have a couple of quick questions that I want you to answer. Um, Let's let me start with what are your three go to everyday diamonds and how do you style them? Um, I like stacked rings. Um, I like uh, just simple diamond solitaires, which I wore even for your shoot. They give me a lot of choices, but I was like, there's nothing more classic than just a solitaire. Um, the classic South Indian style that I love that I would wear with, like today, I almost you know, said, okay, why don't I wear my grandmother's earrings and wear something Indian, you know, um, because I think that's so beautiful and classic, but then I had shoot and I didn't do it. <laughs> but yeah, those earrings, which I love. Um, what else? I think also uh, stacks around the neck, basically everything. I don't know. Okay. I I'm clearly yeah. seeing that I can't get you, I can't get you to say it's one or the other. What would you like do? I I actually like statement pieces, but I've fallen in love with stacking around the neck. Yeah. Um, but I like that one small piece um, because I'm very slowly building a collection of diamonds that I'm very thoughtfully thinking, you know, like you curate art. I've been curating jewelry, thinking this piece will sit here and this piece belongs here and this piece will go to so-and-so. But mostly I'm curating a collection that I'm going to enjoy and wear every day. And then my story will pass on to someone later. But right now I want to write my own story. So um, that's what I'm doing. I tell you tell one thing that I love. I would love like uh, diamond hair pins. Like, you know, mm. those, hair combs, those vintage hair combs. <gasps> they look so pretty. They look very beautiful. So tell me, who do you think has the best diamond jewelry box in the business? Have you looked at anyone's collection and said, I want this uh, and I need to buy it? Uh, who do you think has the best jewelry in the business? And then... Who's an icon when it comes say, to jewelry style? I would say Rekha Ji. She has exquisite jewelry. She also knows her jewelry and her saris, and she really has a good eye. You know, there have been shoots I've done where she has called me and told me, you know, this piece of jewelry was very beautiful. You pulled it off, but it should have been like this for it to have been correct. I remember it was the Raja Ravi Varma shoot I did, and uh, you know, it, this the septum, uh, it's called a bulak, I think, in the south. And um, that particular piece, she told me how it should have been, and I was like, and I told them the same thing. <laughs> so I felt very happy, pleased with myself. So uh, she's she looks at everything so you know, she has a very keen eye, and she really knows her jewelry, and she wears. Is it stuff? I also think that you know, in in uh, in the south, they are very uh, they have a particular uh, connection with their diamonds, especially national diamonds, and they pick the best diamonds. Like even if it's the smallest diamond, it has to be D. It has to be clear. It has to be V V V V V S. So you know, so they are very very. Um, particular about it so I'm I'm very sure I've not seen too many of her diamonds but I'm very sure she has some very beautiful uh, diamonds but I've seen her other jewelry a lot of it 
one of my favorite stories being back in Chennai was we were doing a luxury event and I was talking about luxury fashion and accessories. And a woman came to me very smartly and she says, this bag will fray. This outfit will go out a trend, but I only buy natural diamonds for my daughter because they will stay with her for a lifetime. Absolutely. That's so true. That is so true. And you can pass it on forever. And the better the quality, the more special you feel <laughs> is what I think. Thank you for speaking to us, Aditi Rao Haidari, for the Natural Diamond Council of India and Vogue uh, Jewelry Festival. Um, you know, speaking to you makes me, reminds me that diamonds are much more than just a beautiful, natural, precious stone. I think a diamond in our lives is, you know, a reflection of almost the best that's yet to come for us. I think we use the sparkle to shine for ourselves. And I think that's the most beautiful thing about this, this precious stone. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you.